Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Depot TV. We're glad you decided to join us this Sunday night or Monday or whenever it is that you're watching. We're just glad you tuned in. Today, we've got the music of Megan Marlene, a lovely interview with community member, Groove Fest organizer, Mardi Gras organizer, and amazing art therapist, Amy Rook, and a short Terry's Wear with Terry Buffalo Wear. Before we get started, I would like to remind you that it is the Depot membership drive, and we would love to have you as a member of the Depot. Our members and the individuals that support the work of the Depot make it possible for us to be caretakers of the historic Santa Fe Depot here in Norman, provide a fantastic gallery space, put on Summer Breeze concert series, and we have some Depot concerts coming up that we are terribly excited about. On October 10th, we have Ron Bailey with guest Terry Ware. Uh, tickets for that are available on our site, and also Ellis Paul is coming back. We'll remind everybody that you will uh, need to be vaccinated or have a negative test within 72 hours if you'd like to attend one of those concerts, and we appreciate the attempt to help keep our community safe. Um, I think that's it. Join as a member. Oh, hi, everybody. There's Beans, my cat, saying hello. Uh, you can join as a member of the Depot at normandepot.org forward slash join, and we'd love to have you. All right, that's it for me. Depot TV. Okay, this song's called Blue Skies. Rolling through the desert with all the windows down. Right shotgun with you, I'm the luckiest girl around. Dancing in the sea, singing all my favorite songs. I'm acting like a fool, but you just smile and sing along. Baby, we're far from me and perfect. We both got a past we're trying to leave. With you by my side, the sun always shines. And all I see is nothing but blue skies up ahead When I catch you staring at me the stars light up your eyes I swear you think I'm magic I won't tell you otherwise And no one knows what our future holds what troubles we might find but I'm not scared of anything as long as are mine Baby, we're far from me and perfect We've both got a past we're trying to leave With you by my side The sun always shines And all I see It's nothing but blue skies up Thinking low, you kiss my hand and sing to me every love song you know. And I can't help but wish things all stay this way. I kind of hope you'll be the one who won't wander away. Baby, we're far from me and perfect, but what if we both choose not to leave?
The song is called Stepping Stone. Damn it. It's too low. <laughs> I got nerves all of a sudden. This song is called Stepping Stone. I won't shrink myself to fit under your arm And I won't hide my anger to ease your troubled heart And I won't be your seven stone And this, that's what it takes to wear your ring Well, and I'd rather die I won't sand my edges to fit into your comfort zone And I won't sacrifice my joy cause you fear the unknown And I won't be your stepping stone And if that's what it takes to wear your ring Well and I'd rather die I won't trade my freedom for your security And I won't break myself bending to your jealousy And I won't be a stepping stone And if that's what it takes to wear your ring Well, and I'd rather die Hi everybody, it's me, Sherry, here at the Depot, and I am with Megan Marlene. Welcome, Megan. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I have lots of questions because you and I have never met before. That's right. I've heard a little of your music, uh, and I'm curious. First, this is a thing I always ask everybody. Are you from Norman or Oklahoma? Are you a transplant? And how did transplant. you get here? I grew up in eastern Kansas, actually, on a little family farm. Um, what? Yeah. Uh, so I moved here about 10 years ago, oil and gas, actually. There you so, go. Yeah, moved here for work, and I never meant to stay, actually. Um, I moved here, and it felt different, and so yeah. I was like, I'm going to stay here for a couple of years and then just go, but that was 10 years ago, so I think I'm stuck now, and I love it here, so. It happens. The, those of us that are from Norman and try to leave, jokingly say, all roads lead back to Norman. <laughs> it's <'Cause> true. <laughs> Everything always comes back home. Yeah. Norman is such a cool place, too. You know, I lived in Edmond for a while, and I don't yeah. think that was a good fit, but the I moved to Oklahoma City, and then the more time I spend in Norman, the more I just fall in love with it. So, right Yeah, Norman's a pretty great place. I like it's it cool. all right myself. <laughs> so you said oil and gas, yes. and that's the job that brought you here. How yeah. did you get into that work? Uh, well, I got a degree in college making maps, and so that's how I started. Yeah. Map making? Yeah. I 
love maps. I'm a little bit of a nerd for a map legend. Okay. I have a couple of framed maps in my home because I just love them. So Nice. Okay. Making maps and that led mm -hmm. you into oil and gas. So now mm -hmm. I'm curious what map making in oil and gas world looks like. Uh, I started mapping pipelines actually. So oh, okay. when you're doing like new construction and stuff, they always need to know where things are Absolutely. and pipelines in relationship to the new rigs and all that other stuff. So I kind of started in, in that world. I started at Chesapeake actually and then okay. sort of moved on from there. But And then you a... got to Oklahoma mm -hmm. and you don't do oil and gas anymore. I kind of do. I still work for a small consulting firm. Okay. Um, so it's my day job. That's your day job? Yeah. But we're here to talk about the passion right. part. Right. Yes. <laughs> Which is more fun. Yeah. So, and you are a singer-songwriter. Yes. Um, and is that always been a thing that kind of slipstreamed along with everything you did? Or? Yeah. I wrote my first song when I was seven. Um, oh, really? It's not very good. <laughs> well, at seven, give but, yourself a little right, grace yeah. for not having it all. Um, yeah. I read somewhere that you have to write a hundred bad songs before you write something good, and I don't, I, maybe I just finally got to that point. I don't know. But gotcha. I, honestly, I think a lot of it was the music community here in Norman and Oklahoma City and yeah. just surrounding yourself with really cool people who care about music That's very right. passionately and who are very into good songs and storytelling with lyrics and things yeah. like that and that was the thing I could really like gravitate towards and it's been really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I do love all of the people I know in the music community here. And Amazing. It's a supportive group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, supportive, loving family. Of humans. I didn't know what to expect because in oil and gas, it can get very, you know, there's, I always tell people there's only one CEO of a company, right? And so everyone's trying to grapple for those top positions. That's right. But in music, it's not been like that. Like all of these people that I just looked up to as my heroes are kind of just circle me in and like, welcome in. We're glad to have you. So it's been really cool. That's lovely. That's lovely. There's something about, there's a very, you know, I work in nonprofit arts organizations. So mm -hmm. working without having profit as the primary motive, yeah. uh, when you're trying to accomplish a goal, it becomes a very different dynamic. Mm -hmm. I, I feel it hits different. Yeah. Um, so I think same in the music industry here, mm -hmm. music people here in Oklahoma. It's about the music. Yeah. So people who are making music are going to fold in other people that want to make music and yep. see if we can make more music. Yep. Um, so when you moved here to Oklahoma, was that something you, were you like gigging then and still writing? Writing and playing some music has always kind of been an outlet for me. And yeah. so I thought about majoring in music when I was in college, but I didn't want to take away from the joy of music for me. Um, so I've been kind of hesitant about really like diving into it. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It just kind of all kind of all happened, I guess. Work kind of slowed down because of the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. And oil was, what, negative $30 a barrel for a while, and everyone freaked out. Yes. <laughs> so my company, we, we, we let off about half of the people in our company, so that wow. was terrifying. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I just started focusing on music more, and just little by little things started happening. I got over stage fright. I've had stage fright so bad for years. Oh, wow. And so it's been hard for me to even, like, play a song in front of like even my family you know like my aunts and uncles I would try to play in front of them and I would just get so nervous but they don't care you know right. like I'm I'm their family but I still just freak out um so conquering that has been a big part of it too so like wow. now During gigs are pandemic. fun yeah yeah because well and that I think offered interesting opportunities because yes. it was smaller things were possible That's so right. I would go cover for one of my friends at the deli and there'd be five people in the bar you know and that was perfect for me honestly because playing at the deli is a really big deal but when there's only five people there it seems less scary <laughs> it's true so <laughs> it's true like I can handle you guys if it right. push come to shove I can fight my way out of this room I can make right. it happen <laughs> right I actually showed up to play it was a song swap thing but I think the Aints were playing before and it was a birthday yeah. party and the bar was packed and I just had a panic attack oh, I walked in bless. dropped my guitar and I just had to take a lap around the block because yeah. I was like I can't do this <laughs> what am I doing what am I doing <laughs> yeah but people could cleared out, you know, and then it was fine. So it was me and, you know, I think it was Chloe Beth. We were song swapping and then it felt a lot more comfortable. But That's great. Yeah. So that's always been a big deterrent for me too, because I'm like, I can't get on stage and play in front of, let alone my music, you know. But now you can. Yes. And you've been yeah. writing some things. Yeah. And working on recording them. Yep. Some yeah. of them right here at the depot. Yes. This I love space, that. yeah, has actually, it, I, I always tell people, like, I feel like it really has shaped some of my music because I came mm -hmm. to Kyle with some stuff and I was like, not really sure on arrangements or yeah. 
you know, how many bars of this go here or whatever. And like hearing all of the sound off the walls in here has changed the way that some of my songs are put together. I love that. So, and we wait for trains to go by and yeah, stuff, yeah. which is cool. <laughs> I love it. It's just, anyway, it's cool. It's a very inspirational space. And so I feel like it just, it's, it's all weaved into the music that I've been coming it. out with the last, well, still working on. But yeah, Avocado sure. Tree was almost all recorded here, I think. We did a lot of that work here. It's great. Yeah, it's fun. Very cool. Well, I think that's it. We're going to hear some of your songs in this episode yeah. uh, of Depot TV. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited for everybody to hear more. Uh, and where can folks follow you and find out more about your music? Um, so I've got, uh, we just came out with Avocado Tree, so that's okay. everywhere where you find digital music, Spotify, Excellent. iTunes, iHeartRadio, which I don't know, some people Love use, it. but okay. I don't, right? Yeah, me either. Um, okay. <laughs> um, and then I've got Facebook and uh, Instagram, so you can find all my stuff there. Um, okay. I have a website, too, so. Very good. All right, everybody, check it out. Megan Marlene, thanks for being here. Thank you. guys it's me sherry and guess what this is it's a commercial actually it's a commercial for commercials we have time on depot tv in space and we need some partners to help support depot tv and keep it going but you know what we got we got this platform and audiences every week and if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about you could become a partner in the depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. <music> TV. I'm your host Sherry and I am here today with a friend and colleague in the arts community, Amy Rook. Welcome Amy. Hi Sherry. Thank Hi. You. Thank you for having me. So happy to have you here. Um, so you've done a lot with the arts community and it's kind of a part of the work that you do as Absolutely. well as your part of the work that 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 very do. much a part yeah. of your work. Yeah. Uh, but first I just want to let people know a little bit about you. Okay. Um, from Norman? Born and raised. Born and raised. But we're really Yankees, that's the truth of it. You're really Yankees? My parents are from New England. Oh, okay. Yeah, and well, they came here for the university and it was a great place to raise a family and so we stayed. And you got to be a lucky Norman kid out of that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> right right on. From that, I'm, I love Boston, but I'm, I don't need to grow up there, so. <laughs> got it, got it. So tell everybody a little bit about the work that you do in your nine to five, because arts is a love and a passion, but also a part of your nine yeah, to five. Yeah, it's really my nine to five. I am a professional licensed counselor, but really an, a registered art therapist yeah. since about 2001. But you know, in my heart, since more like 1990, when I discovered art therapy um, at a conference at the university, mm -hmm. and then just had a 10 year plan through my masters to be an art therapist and work creatively um, problem solving in the schools and art therapy in the office, using art to facilitate communication and expression. 
I love that that's the work you do because I think all of us that work in the arts we're know all intuitively we're all doing doing that we're all <laughs> that the arts we're are. We're all art therapists. That's right. That it <laughs> is. Because it is healing, but you know, yes. there's training involved. So yes, yeah. yeah. So when you work in something like an office space and use the arts mm -hmm. book, what does that look like? Oh, every office is different at the Art Therapy Center yeah. on the corner of Tom and Peters. And it's been there about 30 years, but we have a large studio mm -hmm. where we can have a large table and all the art supplies and really kind of make a mess in there with linoleum. And then the, we have other offices that are, are carpeted, but we are trained well in our early years on how to make art anywhere or how to facilitate creativity. So it may not necessarily be fine arts. It might just be piecing metaphors together too sometimes. Um, but, I mean, it usually starts with just really listening to what their creative outlet already is yeah. or something they were drawn to once upon a time or already do naturally in, in, in the present and then trying to kind of find what might be the best fit for them. And if there's no awareness of that, we might start with drawing and Got it. kind of see where it goes. Yeah. I, I absolutely love the idea that art can be used as a tool to help a group express itself or individuals express mm -hmm. themselves because those things don't necessarily always come naturally or easy to everybody mm -hmm. verbally. Yeah, that's why we do it yeah. because so much of what we're struggling with is a nonverbal experience. It's an yeah. abstract emotional experience and um, how else do we even see ourselves, let alone express it to others. Yeah. yeah. So it's I a reflective that. tool. So. You've been doing that work for how long? Well, including training, about 25 years. About 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in terms of internships and practicums and nursing homes. and Really, even if I were to go further back, my primary mentor in the field is Byron Jackson, who works mm -hmm. with Possibilities Incorporated. And he is such a creative and playful force that I learned to integrate the two in my teen years through okay. theater and music and community work. That's really where it comes from. Wow, okay, so this has just always been a yeah. part of, oh, I love that so much. <laughs> yeah, I it's my happy that. place. Awesome. It's my comfort zone, and it's so effective, and research-based effective. <laughs> so. And research-based effective, that's yeah. the part that I think, you know, mm -hmm. so many times when people think about the arts or think about the art therapy or other things, you can kind of, people tend to want to place that in some sort of fluff category. Right, like it's extra. for children, right. that kind of thing. And but it's eight by 10 pieces of paper. Human so. expression is a critical piece yeah. of us figuring out who we are and how to be in the world mm -hmm. and the arts is... Yeah, connecting with ourselves so we can connect with others. Yeah. Yes. All of that, <laughs> yes ma'am. Uh, and besides that, you've also been long-term involved in two of the oldest arts programs here in Norman. Uh, yeah. And I love that, so let's start with Groove Fest. Yeah. Talk about Groove Fest. So, it's one of my favorite things. Yeah, I started in 1986, so we're looking at 35 years. Been in 87 was my first Groove Fest um, at Andrews Park, and so of course I'm grateful to our founders for that, and my friend David Slumens, among many others. Mm -hmm. um, but I was really just a kind of a participant, but learning so much about human rights, and mm -hmm. um, just, I should say witness, really, <clears throat> but learning so much about human rights. Uh, with community, not just in a book or uh, watching a video and that kind of thing. And of course, during that time, it, you know, Live Aid was huge and all that right. uh, rock and roll activism. So I did that actually for many years. Even when I had a kid, I would just stop by to buy a t-shirt and sign the petitions, you know. But then around um, maybe 05, 06, 07, my friends were in a leadership role and mm -hmm. I joined the art um, committee and got involved in the posters and the t-shirts. And then in 2010, um, there was a change in leadership, and so I volunteered to um, continue the legacy. That was our um, 25th year, I guess. So yeah, I'm right at, well, I guess now I'm hitting 11 years. Wow. So, but I mean, we're actually delegating into kind of a new generation these days with GrooveFest. But the inspiration behind it for me, what keeps me going is, I mean, on my way, I have to admit, I was thinking about um, Dr. Henderson. And yeah. He was the original faculty sponsor for the GrooveFest uh, student organization associated mm -hmm. with Amnesty International at OU. And when he spoke this last time, I mean, he just keeps, you know, letting us know how important it is to um, get on that train, as he says, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> and how to do something, whatever your jam is, do something, whatever, you know, 
fits in your world. So I just had to kind of keep that going. And, and I've had a great team with Lindsay Martin and David Solomons mm -hmm. and um, so many more. <clears throat> so that's Groove Fest. It's community art therapy, though, is how it feels. Absolutely. That's my intention. Absolutely. And for those of you that might not know, Groove Fest is a festival, one of the oldest festivals, started in 1986. Yeah, let me takes place clarify. every year. It is the longest running human rights music festival in Oklahoma. The only second longest is two years older in, um, in it, uh, just outside Atlanta, I think Athens, and Georgia. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm not sure what they're doing, but this is what we're doing. And it seems even a little harder. And honestly, Jack Healy, former president of Amnesty International, said, Amy, wait, you did it twice a year for, <laughs> for so very, very long. It's no longer twice a year. It's in the fall, um, usually the first weekend of October, not last year and maybe not this year. So. Gotcha. No, but we'll do it when we can. And I really love, mm -hmm. like, what you said about Dr. Henderson, about getting on the train. Yeah. Because when we think about Groovefest speaks to community healing and to human rights in mm -hmm. all the forms that that takes. And that's not a fundraiser, we raise the funds, we're done, mm -hmm. we fix a problem and it's over. This is a conversation forever. Yeah, and it's, it's really also inviting the voices that need to be heard. That's the main idea, yeah. is to speak about human rights between the musicians. And the musicians tend to select songs that from their heart speaks about human rights. And, caring about each other and equality and so many other elements. That, but, you know, we also have vendors. So the idea is that you can get involved and find your own personal call to action through the information booths of local organizations. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, whatever you and can jump into, let's get on it. <laughs> on those vendors, I love that the groups represented and the ideas represented just cover so many facets of yeah. the way that we walk through the world. Mm -hmm. Everything from you know, sustainable farming or, mm -hmm. you know, human rights, accessibility, healthcare, environment, yes, health, mm -hmm. all of it. Beyond racism, we're talking about, you know, income and inequality yep. quite a bit because it's just systemic through all the issues, whether you're talking about healthcare, you know, reproductive rights or yep. um, religious freedom for that matter. So. Yeah, I love it. Me too. <laughs> and not only have you done that for that many years, but you have also been yeah. one of the cornerstones of the Mardi Gras parade. Yeah, I do love that one. This is where I might geek out on you a little bit. <laughs> Go, let's have it. I just really get excited because there's so much more art involved. I mean, yeah. the joy of, of, I'll back it up in a minute, but the joy of rocking down Main Street with your family and friends, having created whatever moved you, and some working on it all year long, grandparents yeah. and their grandchildren, and it truly is family friendly. I'm not sure some believe that, but it truly it is a really family friendly is. event. So it's been going on since 94, founded by Jeannie Flanagan and other creative friends. Jennifer, I see you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Jennifer. <laughs> um, created by family and friends. So it's you know, changed hands through the years, but um, the idea was just to shake off the winter blues and kind of get people back together and yeah. hiding out during the winter. And so, um, you know, they started going around downtown a couple times, and I, I jumped in in around 2011 when my good friend also, thank you, Ed Kearns, for welcoming into the circle. Um, mm -hmm. He was the chair for, for at that time. I jumped in because I had the tools from Groovefest. A year yeah. later, I, it, it just had made sense at yeah. the time. Plus, we were building a float, and we had a van, and we had plans, and so <laughs> we needed <laughs> we to, needed it to work. <laughs> and my friends, like we needed to keep this going. And so the marketing has has evolved in the yeah. last ten years, you know, with my help and friends. And so now the last. Uh, one was one of our best with good weather. We had around four or five thousand. It was amazing. It was really good. It was huge and beautiful, yes. and it does feel so celebratory. Mm -hmm. It's such a great marking of maybe mm -hmm. sort of toward the end of the cold days, and you're out. Yeah, it's fantastic. it was it's really good. And even if it is cold, the diehard fans still show up at, at a couple, couple thousand that. in Norman. But I have to give extra special thanks to my friend Julie Soper. She's yeah. really been at the helm the last couple of years, and I was just backing her up. And we had a great team with Sarah Jane and Melanie Cottle. That I'm grateful for their hard work, honestly. As I kind of step away, actually, you know, I've done some time. I'll always be involved because I just, you can see how excited I get when I talk about it. It's just so much fun. Even creating the Zydeco gumbo cook-off. Yeah. Which is just more community, more music. Fantastic fundraiser. You know, and lifting it. up cooks that are professional cooks and mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, business uh, men of color and we want to support them. and. Um, shout out to Joseph Darwin, classic Cajun cuisine, five-time yeah. winner. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you for being here to talk about what yeah. you do. You know, Art at the for all. depot, we changed our vision statement uh, a couple of years ago and we had right before COVID because we noticed that the most important thing that we did around our gallery or Summer Breeze or the other things was the sense of community that arose around those things. Mm. And so our vision was a community created through shared artistic experiences. Yeah, I truly um, believe fundamentally human rights are about connection. That yeah. we, we under, when we spend time, when we break bread together, yeah. when we play together, it just, it kind of makes you want to listen and care about each other a little bit more. A little bit more, <laughs> softens your heart, shakes the crusties <laughs> yeah, off. Even yeah, even if we might have, you know, different values or different internalized oppression for that matter, like mm -hmm. we've just still got to get together, we can't isolate. That's right. Which I know is challenging. Mm. determination and creativity will get us through absolutely yes ma'am <laughs> thanks for being here thank you for what you do for our yeah, community thanks Sherry for inviting me and letting me share absolutely <laughs> alright everybody Amy Rook <laughs>
desperate for a sign Your sadness was the quicksand Slowly swallowing me And I had no choice but to leave And I could no longer breathe I didn't make it to service to see your final resting place. I hope you found peace, but I couldn't stand to look your mama in her eyes, cause I know shackles and shame that comes with being guilty your sadness was the quicksand it slowly swallowed you whole you fought the good fight I know but the struggle will take its toll And I could not save our love And I never dreamed that I was Your lifeline I was your lifeline These days I walk the streets Alone in the night I think of you and look for Facts in the light This song is called Avocado Tree. to what we know let's plant an avocado tree and all our friends got married same thing to do exchange some vows and rings have a kid or two but nothing grows inside diamonds or gold and i just want our love to last until we're
I'll teach you to dance. You teach me to sing. Keep life simple. Enjoy the little things. I'll sit out on the back porch. Play some tunes for friends. Let's keep making music. Now until the end. So let's to what we know let's plant an avocado tree maybe one day we'll buy this house we rent make the most of all the time we spent so let's plant an avocado tree in the garden out back you built for me Thanks everybody for tuning in. That was a great show and a really lot of fun to sit down with the folks involved in the program today. Um, thank you to all the sponsors, to all the individuals and folks like you who could become a member of the depot for as little as $5 a month during our membership drive at normandepot.org forward slash join. Pardon my shaky camera. My cat is shaking the table again. Uh, we'll see you next time on Depot TV. Oh, hey. If you stuck around and you made it this far and you become a member, uh, by October 10th, I just comment member on this post and I'll upgrade your membership to the next level up. Thanks. See you next week.